All right. is who I believe to be our newest father on the line. Thank and that way. is Deacon Alan LaChapelle. God bless you. Come on Amen. in. Good morning, everyone. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. Father's Day. Amen. God, he has allowed us to experience how great his love is for us through the love of our fathers when we were young. For those that maybe did not know their biological fathers, but had a father figure that was there to teach them from a young age the importance of our behavior, right from wrong, to appreciate all that God has blessed us with, and most importantly, how not to be afraid to love. God has always and is still showing his unconditional love for each one of us. Jesus is our strength and the ultimate example of what a father is supposed to aspire to be. He has also allowed us to be fathers, to be able to pour out our experience and our love into our children so that they may experience peace, joy, forgiveness, and the unconditional love that only comes from our Heavenly Father. Amen. Um, I've got some verses, I have some, some scripture. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. Bring them up in, in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Proverbs 1, 8. Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and forsake not your mother's teaching. Did you take the, my car out? Yeah, it's on the driveway. Back in Corinthians, uh, chapter 6, verse 18, And I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. Psalms 103, verse 13, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 6, Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Second Samuel seven fourteen and 15, I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. When he does wrong, I'll discipline him in the usual ways, the pitfalls and obstacles of this mortal life, but I'll never remove My gracious love, him. Mm-hmm. Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 22. Listen to your father who gave your life, and do not despise your mother when she is old. Proverbs 23, 24. The father of a righteous child has great joy. Mm. A man who fathers a wise son rejoices in him. Uh, Luke fifteen twenty. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, Deuteronomy 1.31 There you saw how the Lord your God carried you as a father carries his son all the way you went until you reached his place. Malachi 4 verse 6 mm. will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Yes, Lord. And the final one, Hebrews 12, 7. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is not disciplined? By his father. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord.
Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, this morning we have uh, Minister Gerald Smith, Jerry, uh, and he is going to come with Chick and share with us the scripture reading that will be a, a guideline for today's message. Good morning, Chuck. Good morning. Uh, Genesis 1, 26 to 31. Could you repeat that, please? Genesis uh, 1, verse, chapter 1, verse 26 to verse 31. Thank you. And then chapter 2, verse 7. You got it? Amen. Amen. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them <coughs> and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the air. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth, and every tree whose, whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. Mm. Also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food. And it was so. Then God saw everything that he had made. And indeed, it was very good. So the evening and the morning were of the sixth day. Chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. Mm. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. I want to have the joy and pleasure this morning of introduce, introducing to this pulpit Pastor Dr. Alfred Ochien. Pastor Ochien is a part of BLIF uh, Fellowship, and he has been with us uh, for a very long time. He's also, uh, remember, God took him through an incident when he returned to his home country uh, in Kenya, and we had prayed for him. God has restored him. And now he is back um, with us on this side of the country. He ministers with his lovely wife, Pastor Rosalind McKenzie Ochian, in Mistissini, uh, Quebec. And so we give God praise and allow him and bringing him forth this morning to minister to us on this special Father's Day. Sir, you may put your video on and come on in and share with us what God has placed upon your heart to the people of Bethel. Good morning, everybody. And Good morning. Praise Good morning. the Lord. Amen. And happy Father's Day. You may put your video on. Okay. Uh, today's message. Can I continue? Yes, go ahead, my brother. Today's message is uh, based on uh, the reading which we have just had, and uh, <clears throat> my topic is actually based on the perfect father, and our perfect father is God. And uh, the topic reading is emulating God, our heavenly father. Uh, just as we read from verse 1, that uh, our Heavenly Father said, let us create man in our own image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and the cattle, over all the earth, and over creeping things that creeps on the earth. This is a provision of 
had a laid out foundation and has spelled out uh, 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 what we are supposed to do. Actually, God spelled it out right from the foundation. Then he went on to start the physical creation. And then he said, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And this one was the creation of, of Adam from the dust of the soil, which actually he indicates very well in chapter 2, verse 7, which says that, and the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground. This is the composition of the man. And I want us to know clearly that uh, we were formed out of the dust of the ground. And, and he breathed into his nostril uh, the breath of life. And man became a living being. Man is structured in this composition. And that God knew very well that man has to be made. And he spelled it out what you are made from. It doesn't matter how great you are. It doesn't matter how much you feel you are or how you look like. That does not matter. What matters is the composition you have. And that's the place you have to go back to. You are made from the dust of the ground. And the, the breath of God is in you as a man. And you became a living being simply because of the breath of God. And without that, even if you are beautifully designed or hugely designed, you, you, you would do nothing. And you would actually lie there as a corpse. But life is in you as a man because you have actually been created in the image of God. Now, uh, I want us to, to know that God accomplishes work by blessing a man. That's why we call him El Shaddai, because he did his work perfectly, and God blessed man, blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. We have to fill this earth and subdue. And that is a dominion that God has given to us, a provision, a blessing that he came from him. All what we are trying to acquire, we are trying to acquire supplementary things or secondary things. The prime thing is that God had given man the capability from the start to dominate everything, to possess the earth. We were well packaged as men. Then having dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over everything that moves on the earth means that uh, you are actually given a domain here below. Man was given a territory here below so that he can be an extension of God here below on earth. Just like God have dominion over everything, you were given, you and me, was given a dominion over the face of the earth and everything that is on the earth and even the birds of the air. Mm -hmm. So Jehovah Jireh provides. He said in verse 29, and God said, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you, to you it, uh, it shall be for food. Every tree, every herb that yields, he provided for man, irrespective of the fact that he has given him the power to rule and dominate the earth, he had given him also a provision for food on daily basis. Mm. And he did not only do that to prove that he is a righteous God that does not discriminate. He went to verse 30 and said, and also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to every, everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I have given every green herb 
for food, and it was so. Let man say that, oh God, you created all these creatures. What do I feed it with? God provided for them. And that is why it is important to look at how much God took his time to design us and structure us and locate us in a proper place, gave us the authority. Not only did he give us the authority to dominate, he breathed on us to give us life. He blessed us as men so that we can be perfect just as he is perfect. Yeah. But verse 31 says, then God saw everything he has made. And indeed, it was good. So the evening and the morning was the sixth day. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, God is Elohim, the creator of heaven and earth, our, the almighty one. Now, he looks back because of his perfection nature. He looks back and, and to what he has done. And he says, it is perfect. There is nowhere where I have left not properly done. Because mm. he's a perfectionist. So we have to emulate him. Yes. Now, now, the role of the father in the 21st century is appalling. And this is what we want to dwell on today. Having seen what God did or laid out as a structure for man, we want to compare and see where we are. Mm -hmm. And indeed, we start on a bad record because the fatherlessness is the most destructive trend in our generation today. And more than half of today's children or half, 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 halfway seen their father in their lives because some of them have no fathers at all. And this has caused a lot of uh, disconnect in the family life. It has caused destruction in the family life. And when the family structure is destroyed, we know a lot of consequences follows. Mm -hmm. This has resulted in children getting caught up in various, very many things because we have so many absentee fathers in the home. They wake up in the morning and they come back when the children are asleep. They wake up to go to work, as employment, and come back late in the evening. Our fathers are not there for us. And therefore, this generation has given forth children who do not know their fathers. They have man figures in their homes, but they do not have fathers. My God. So this is why the children are looking for uh, some other solaces. So they look for uh, for other places to put their head. They see their contemporaries who are actually coming from the houses of fatherlessness and they group up to start alcohol and drug abuse at a very early age. They also go ahead and get some teenage pregnancies before their time because the father was not there to fall back on. And they even go ahead and increase in suicide cases like in the zone which we are in. We have to deal with that a lot because the father was not there to give advice. Mm -hmm. And even if the father was there, the father has come from the background of fatherlessness. And the mother has also come from the background of the fatherless. So the two have met there. The two people who have no identity at all, they cannot identify themselves with their parents. And therefore, the two identityless are married together. And you expect them to bring forth a child who has a defined identity. It is looking for something where you cannot find. And if someone doesn't have an identity, obviously that person is, uh, is a nobody. Mm. Yeah, because if you marry a, a nobody, and you are a nobody, you expect to give forth to a nobody. My God. Yeah. My All right. God. So the fall of fathers started in the Garden of Eden when God could not find 
the first man. The, in fact, that is in, a, in, a, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 9, where now Adam started hiding from God, started being absent from God. Well, God needs you as a man for a fellowship in order for things to go right. And he's, he said, I am hiding. Hiding because of what? Because sin has gotten into his life. Mm. And this, this is the reason why we do not have a role model. We do not have a role model father. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15 to 16, that for though we might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. My for God. In, for in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you, imitate me. That's verse 16. Imitate me. There is no fathers here below now for children to imitate. Just this morning, I got encouraged. And I said, I thank God for my children. Because they made my day. My, my phone was full of messages from them. You are a wonderful father. You are one in a million. You are all kinds of adjectives. Then I told myself, I never knew because I really had a lot of shortcomings in my life. But I thank God because you can actually recover what you lost. I lost a lot. There is a time I realized my children are not with me. There's a time I knew that I was far from them because I was so busy in the business of the world. I did not have time for them, by the way. I was one, just like one, those who go in the morning and come back in the evening when they're asleep. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I did not have time even to help them in their homework. And when now this one was coming, I just realized, oh, the reason why I'm now a good fighter is a father is simply because I have plugged back my cable to the right source. And yes. that is now I'm in tune with God. Amen. And uh, I, I encourage them every day in God. Actually, one of them uh, who, who was really stubborn uh, wrote a very good, is actually the best. He told me, even though our, our life has had ups and downs and our dad has been consistent telling us about the word of God. And wow. uh, it's one of the best that we have. And, uh, and that really encouraged me. And I said, oh, I have even to give them my, 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 my thanks and say, actually, I, I extracted one of the photographs of my late dad and just said, I also thank you, dad, for you taught me well so that I can teach my children. Amen. And they, they answered back with a lot of applause, saying that the first time they are seeing a digital photo of their grandfather because they didn't see him. He died before they were born. So what I'm trying to say here is, what do we do when we are born in such a structure? What do we do? There is only one solution. And the solution is going back to the drawing board. Going back to God. Because he is the one that created us. And the, we can only reflect on him because he is, uh, he is the one that has the perfection. He is the one that can let us know the direction to take and how to do it. Jesus said, of course, you can read from Jesus to his father. Jesus said to Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I said to you, that is in John chapter 5 and verse 19. Most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but okay. what he sees the father do. What he sees, I want us to you to know to note one thing. What he sees the father do. Yes. The, yes. Son, the son also in like manner will do. Yes. Father must be available yes. for the son to see. A father must be observable. The son cannot observe you in the dark while you, you come. 
they would like to see how you are, how you dress, how you, how you carry yourself, so that they can also copy the same. I have a young man here who was uh, graduating on uh, grade, I think uh, the lower grade primary, and uh, he, he tells the mother that uh, he would like to be like Pastor Alfred, and therefore buy me a tie, buy me because I like putting on a tie on Sundays, mm -hmm. morning services. So Jesus. buy me a tie and a coat. I want to be like Pastor Alfred. So uh, I had to give him even a shirt because he's grown big. I have to give him a shirt and a tie for graduation uh, on, on Monday. Uh, so what I'm trying to say here, children, look at you. You must be somewhere Mom. for a child to look at to you see. Yes. for a model. They, will, they are not going to pick anything from anywhere. And if you leave them, then you are in for a rough time because they are going to pick other things which you like not. And we can only emulate our God, our Christ, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he emulated his father. Mm -hmm. So we find that the number of problems we have uh, in, on the, the face of the earth now is because of the absence of fathers in the family. Jesus. Because the absence of the father in the, in the family translates into problems in the family units. Then it also translates into community problems as it grows and therefore grows into our nation, hence into the global problem which we yes. have today. Yes. And what is the solution? The solution I said is to look back to the creator, look back on the structure which God wants us to work on. And what is this structure? We have to know in Matthew 5, 40, 48, he says that therefore you shall be perfect just as your father in heaven is perfect. Man has to identify with God spiritually and mm. turn from his business. Mm. We are not here actually to deal with our ideals, but we want God's ideals to be in us so yes. that we can disseminate them to our children. Yes. The God's ideals are well specified. And they are distinct from the ordeals that we go in. So it is, it is actually, does, it has no value for us to look at other things from outside while God had done everything in its full perfection. Mm -hmm. To God, the perfect role, the, I would say that the perfect role model of our son, to our father, was Jesus. Jesus saw what, who God knew, what, who God is, and he practiced the role of a good son to a father. Yes. And when Jesus said that um, whatever he does is what the father tells him to do, he depended on his father entirely. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if a good father comes out, a child will have identity. Yes. Number one. I'm going to list about Ten of those, the child has identity because the father he sees from. He can identify himself with the father. He mm. can tell other children that that is my dad, and uh, and he, he will behave like the way dad behaves. Why? Because the father is present. The father is available for observation. The mm. father is a role model to him. The father is all that he knows is the best father. And uh, this one is a dilemma today because children are trying to get uh, identity from other things. No wonder they sometimes do things that you would think this should be, uh, this should be a preserve for women. Why is mm. this child doing this? So they do that because they have lost identity. They are looking for a particular identity in things because yes. the father is not there to yes. provide for the identity that they desperately need mm. at the right time in their lives. Mm. Then a father must provide work for the child to do. Mm. That is when the father is simply an employee the whole of his life 
the, 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 it's not good enough because you yeah. should be an employee but also provide something that a child can be proud of. That you yes. Amen. And that is, that's what is called work. Work is different from, different from the job you are doing. And the, the job you are doing, your child cannot inherit. And the, the, the Bible says that you should be able to provide work for the child to inherit. Yes. Yes. And that is, uh, if you look at uh, John 5.17, we'll give you a guide on that. So we have to we have to be distinct. We have to be like God. When we say that we have a job to do, we are suffocating our potential, our ability to be creative, our ability to provide for our children other avenues that they can lean on. With the, with the world economy becoming so competitive, what are we thinking about our children? What, where will they be? How are they going to get their living after we've gone? That is a father. A father should be able to sacrifice, even sometimes to, to maybe have only one shirt or one trouser, and even if it is getting torn, you persevere with it to make sure that you save enough for your child, for your child to inherit. Yes. And if you are not in that category, you are actually killing your child. My God. So. That is one thing that we have to see. Number three, there must be a purpose. A, ch a father must provide a purpose for the child. And the purpose is, an, is actually covered in you. You are mm -hmm. made complete. You are made for a reason. You are made to do something. That's going back to Genesis. Your uh, CV was well defined mm -hmm. and you are made with package complete, you have to provide a purpose. He must derive it from you so that he can have a purpose. And he has to see that he is also entitled to come and or come up and prosper in life, where he yeah. can sit back with other children and say, I will be do even better than my dad. And my mm. dad is so good. He has excelled and he has reached this level. I must do something even better. He has challenged us. I remember the other day, my my son, one of my son, no, my daughter, sorry, my daughter came and said, oh, dad, has, dad is really challenging us. And uh, he's just got his doctorate. So what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm sitting, I'm, I'm going back to study. She's got a master in uh, agricultural, agricultural economy. And uh, he, she's going back, she's, she's doing his, her PhD. Uh, in, in agriculture. So I said, Amen. we can actually be an example to our children yes, by, we can. Le by leading them in front. Let's be, let's lead from front. And when we lead from front, they will see we must provide tangibles, things that can be seen, and we must be available for them. We must continue talking to them yes. so that they, they may know that we are different and we are obedient and submissive to God, who is the perfect father. And anytime you see a child derailing from his way, approach the child with love. Mm. Approach him with love and tell him how much you love him and how much he can do better in life. Encourage a child so that he can actually know that surely my dad loves me. And when it starts from love, it definitely starts from God, so that uh, you can build from there and give him the direction. We cannot continue reprimanding them. We cannot continue beating them with the scriptures that we know that this is sin, this is sin. They don't like that. We have to tell them there is another way of doing it. Why don't you have you tried this way? God loves you, and you can come out of it. Mm. So that is what a far good father should do so that a child can find his purpose in life because without a purpose in life and without identity in life and without any work in life the next thing a child would think is simply to commit suicide and Jesus. that is that's why we are having a lot of problem trying to correct the background of childlessness and even uh, the houses having problems because here is, the, here is the, the woman and the man, and the man he is married has no identity, had no purpose in life, and he's just there. 
and he comes back, the wife wants him to produce the word because they are, we men are supposed to be the providers. They are mm -hmm. supposed to be the head of the family mm -hmm. according, to, according to what we know. And God's formula is that he is not only the head, but he sees the head leadership while actually he is the foundation where mm -hmm. they is built from. Jesus. So basically, a man is the solid foundation of the home. Yes. And therefore, the building has to be on him. And yet he observes what is going on on the walls and what is going on on the rooftop. Mm. Because it's a man that gives the family a cover. So when the woman prays a man without identity and without a purpose in life so much, the words get finished. And uh, there is a common statement that comes out of the mouths of men. And that, what else does this woman want from me? It's a loaded statement. What else does he want from me? And mm -hmm. I'm telling you, men are not blessed with a lot of words as women. So we have to pray for them because some of them feel by the Holy Ghost and just pray that God should restrain them from releasing the five, the, their fist to the women. Mm. We have to pray for them because they feel so much charged inside. But because he's saved, he is actually restraining himself from reaching out and grabbing even the neck of the woman. And My that God. is because he has lost everything. He has no identity. He has no purpose. And this man is being pushed beyond what he can bear. And the only thing for those who have not been, who have not, not, not known Christ, the only thing that they, they do is a fight in the house. And we have a problem solving oh such kind. So we are saying that a father must have, must build a purpose in a son. And also a father must Come, that's number four, must come up with something for heritage, something that they can see that this is uh, our father, this is what our mm -hmm. father did. A uh, father should not die just empty. When he dies, his place is completely clean, and children do not know even where to start. And with this hard economy, they are wondering what was with this father before the father and so and so did this, the father and so and so did that. But what was our father doing for all these years? So that one must be done. I remember very well when I had to go home and uh, for the land issue because I know if I don't put that thing in order and uh, they are the people to inherit it, uh, I, I shall have done a lot of injustice to them because they need a place to put up their buildings and whatever. And my own, grand, my own mother, which is their grandmother, had already been... The, the portion which she is living had been sold. Somebody just sold her home plus the plot corruptibly. So I had to correct that because they are, uh, I told my mom that, see, mom, you are staying here and actually you have been sold <laughs> plus your mm. property. Wow. Oh my God. And, and I had to go and correct it and file a case with the government so that uh, they can uh, uh, rectify. And I've left them and I said, thank you, Jesus, because of my determination to go even at a wrong time, which I would have liked to travel at that particular time. But I traveled so that I could rescue the situation. A yes. father has to penetrate, a father has to take, uh, uh, take up steps of faith. And that is the reason why as fathers and leaders in a church, as the heads, uh, head of the church, you have to be in front. And that's why when the vaccine came, we had to sit down with the chief of, an area, of this area consulting with me, and we say that we should go there first so that the people can be vaccinated. Yes. Otherwise, they will not. They will say they, they can't go. They, are, they will be asking you, have you been? Have you been vaccinated? Because they want to see whether, they've, whether their pastor also went for vaccination. Yes, yes. And so we did it, and many of them, actually, almost all of them, went for vaccination. So that is how leadership in father, fatherhood is and we should be careful on which step we take at what time and god will also give i mean uh, judges on how we have led our people as the father figures amen now there is uh this one number five says that uh, there is power uh, a child will only have confidence and power wherever he is, when mm. he sees the father and the way the, the father behaves. 
if he's just a timid father who has so many problems and uh, uh, behaves like though he is being forced to be where he is and does not comment, then the child loses that power. And we need the power uh, to, as a stamina to be authoritative. So that one we also have to observe as a father because Jesus had power and his power came from the father. Yes. Yes. So, and then authority, the power goes with authority. Number six is authority. Authority also, we have to, they have to learn from us, the right authority and how to administer the authority. Authority does not mean that he, he has to have authority over his mother, over his father, but authority must be exhibited in a way that it will be seen to be helpful to the community, to him and uh, to the family at large. Yes. yes. Uh, and then he has to be legitimate, number seven. Uh, they, 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 we have to train them in a way that they feel that they belong. Legitimacy is, is very important for, for a child to feel that they are there. They are there and they're, they're legitimate uh, uh, part of the family. So that one will bring us to number eight, which says they will now discover that they have a destiny. And uh, the destiny is that uh, will make them uh, work towards their destiny and work towards the, uh, the, the laid out strategy to achieve their destiny. And this is where uh, the leading of Christianity is, is perfect at this particular time because when he is sober he knows how to balance himself he knows how to go back to the bible then the destiny will lead him to his to achieve all what we have counted and that is the purpose will come out because they say that actually the most richest place on the face of the earth is a graveyard <laughs> Mm, because geez. it is there which lies those who could have been doctors, those who could have written a number of books, oh, and uh, they, they are lying there uh, without anything that can be remembered of them. And that is the reason why we have to give them a, a direction and also for them to open up their eyes to mm -hmm. how to see their destiny very clear that I'll be this, I'll achieve this, I'll be a pilot, I'll be a teacher, I'll be a pastor so that they can see where they are going as clear as possible and with mm -hmm. authority that they have and yes. with the legitimacy in their life. And therefore, we are starving our children. The only way to do it is to hook up well with the creator, the one who knows what you should do at what times, the one yes. who gives you what to tell the children, the one who has the wisdom, the one who has the love, the one who can actually help you in times of need, the one who can bring a statement. A child can come, uh, a child can come to you with a question that you cannot answer. And you will, you don't rush, don't be a rushy father. Just tell him, uh, baby, I will answer that question, but give me time. Go do your research and come back and answer the question accurately. Because if you don't answer it accurately, you will actually destroy that child or build. So the two is very possible. Yes. So so I saw that in my third born. Uh, my third born came to me when he was young and uh, he, he confronted me with a, a religious question. Actually, from the Sunday school, I think they had that the blood of Jesus is the one that cleanses all sins from us. Then he came to me quietly by my foot and told me, Daddy, they told me that the blood of Jesus is, is the one that uh, cleans all our sins. Mm -hmm. Now, what happened when uh, Jesus had not been born? What did they use to clean the sin? Huh? He got me quite yeah. unaware. And I said, oh, 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 okay, okay, boy, that's a good question. I'm going to work now. I keep it. I'm going to answer it accurately. Remind me immediately I come back. And I surely I went and do, did some uh, uh, homework and, and came back and gave him the accurate answer. And I said, 
my God, this little one, where did he pick that from? <laughs> but, but that is what we should do, because we should be accurate in giving them an answer. If you give a wrong answer at a certain age in life, a child will not forget. It is the mind right. is powerful and hygroscopic. It will pick anything and it will not remove it from him. My so Lord. don't ever attempt to give a wrong answer to a child of about seven, eight or, or five years. Do not attempt to give a wrong answer. That bracket of, of age is very bad. If they pick something, you will never remove from them. But that's why the Bible says that teach a child the way of the Lord when he is still young. And when he is grown up, he will not depart from it. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is an accurate saying because when they grow up, they will meet with their uh, age mates and uh, they will run around, they will do things that are not good to you. But remember that you taught them the way of the Lord. Now, you have a base to go back to God. You have a base and an accurate one to pray. If you didn't teach them the way of the Lord and you try now to pray that God may save your child, you are joking. Because Amen. you did not give the foundation. You can go Amen. back to God and say, God, your word does not go out and come back void. I, right. taught, I taught these children the way of the Lord, your yes. ways. And now they are grown up. The Bible does not tell you that when they are growing, they will be perfect. No. The Bible tells you when they are grown up, they will not depart from it. Yes. yes. So you go back there, go to your foundation and go to God and cry. Now you have a reason. Mm -hmm. You have a reason and your petition can be heard before God so that when you now go and cry, your prayers is heard and the child's life begins changing and you yes, see your man. child back. And you can now quickly go and say that uh, uh, Malachi 4, 6 is true. That... Uh, you know, the children will be restored back to you. There is a, there's, there's a state where the children will be restored back to you. But there must be a reason as to why. There must be a base where you are crying from. And mm -hmm. if, you, if you didn't, you still have a chance. The, yes. chance is, you can, the chance is you can run back to God and repent that you did not do what you are supposed to do when you are young, when they were young. Yes. And right now, God, I come before you first as a sinner, forgive me my sin, and therefore, Lord, I'm using the same word that I taught, I, I want to teach them the way of the Lord so that they may not come out of it. So mm -hmm. I will now obey your word, and I will keep to pray, praying for them, and I will bring them back to you. Yes. So there are, there are two ways of doing it for a Christian. But if you are not a Christian and you do not do the right thing, you are actually trying it in a wrong way and it will be difficult for you to succeed. Now, number nine, it says that family, uh, we, after destiny, the child must also have, must also see a family structure in you. Just like God wants us back to be part of his family. Not part, but he's in his family. Yes. So a child would like to relate with, that fam with his family. A child would like to relate with his family. Yes. So we are looking at a whole composition of the right son to a father. And even the, 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 the tenth one says, you, he must have something to tell others. The message, and the message is he, the, what he has heard from his father can be an example even yes. to tell others. Yes. Others, and therefore he has to have that message. We thank God that we. These are the ten leading uh, uh, ops, I mean standards that we can compare with when we think of the life of Jesus. All the time he was referring to his father. All the time he was saying, I will ask my father and my father will give you a helper who will help you, uh, who will teach you and, and lead you into many things. So we, we know that without a connection, without a fallback, it becomes a big problem 
for any father to lead his family and his children perfectly. If, if a good wife who has come out of the present fatherhood, that's a, a family that the father was available, meets a man who came out of a fatherless uh, background, this wife can be helpful to the man because he shall have known how to handle things differently and the man can learn from her. And that is the reason why the old uh, King James Version uh, uh, said that I will give you a help meet, not really a help meet, a help meet. A help meet mm -hmm. is a concept of Hebrews that actually means that your help will come to, to fruitfulness. Your help will come to fruitfulness. You will find how you can coordinate yourself. You will not be everywhere at the same time and doing, I mean, and adding up, realizing nothing. You, your help will meet. Whatever desire you have will have, will come into coordination and yes. you can be able to actually realize what you have planned. Yes. And that is why the old Hebrews use he will give you a help meet, not a help met. Yes. 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 Yeah. So help meet. Help meet. Yeah. Amen. Then, uh, uh, then that is the reason why fathers should be able to to be sound and not confused. Because if the father from absentee father unit meets with a wife of absentee father to start a life, then the chances of severe stress syndrome is born. Because it is, it is a bit of this, bit of uh, stress this side, a bit of stress this side, and they combine it together to form a severe syndrome of stress, and uh, uh, which and this one develops into psychosomatism, mm. and which actually psychosomatism is a way of uh, of uh, disconnect. It's like a mental disorder, but not really. It's a disconnect, confusion. And if not addressed quickly, it can develop in psychosis. And this is a real situation now. And this is the reason why we, we, we try to, to prevent anybody with dangling uh, mind and a completely confused and looks a little bit a lunatic into going into full-blown uh, lunacy. So we, we just have to be careful with the people we are dealing with because the background is missing a very vital person, and that is the father. And there is a choice. The choice is open to us to run back to the fa to our fathers to save our children yes. from falling into the same pits which most of us found ourselves in. And uh, I want to thank God that there is a provision. And in my conclusion of this message is that everybody should turn back to the heavenly father that knows us in and out, that created us from the soil uh, of the ground, that structured us for a reason, that made us the authority to rule over all kinds of, 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 of things that he had laid on the ground for us. This is the right person that we have to go to. You don't take your car if you have a, Toyota, a Ford like me. I don't take it to where Toyotas are being repaired. That will be craziness because I said I want the parts from for Ford uh, Asia, and I go to the Toyota shop and I said, "Give me the part of Toyota uh, Ford Asia." I'll mm. say no. They will tell me no. We don't deal in that. <laughs> we don't God. deal it. Yes. So I have to take it to the Ford manufacturers. So this is the reason why I say to all of us that we have to plug back to the Heavenly Father. Amen. And when we plug back with the Heavenly Father, we'll be able to realize what God has for us. And our future will burst up open and bright. We thank God for, for the message. We must Amen. go back to the Father and we go back to the drawing board. Get rid of all those ordeals that you have in your life. And Amen. please, please look for God's ideals for your life. I Amen. thank God. Because Heavenly Father is the perfect Father we are looking for. Jesus, yes. thank you. Thank you Amen. for your message.
Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the name of the Lord. Praise yeah. the name of the Lord. Lord to God. Amen. I pray that you have sat and you have listened to the word. Of course, if you want to hear it again, you know where it is. It will be on all of our platforms. But I give God thanks and praise, uh, Pastor Alfred, for allowing you to minister forth. Uh, sometimes not necessarily an easy topic because we all have questions. We all have, why didn't this happen and why didn't that happen? Well, you know why? Go back to the building block. Yes. Turn back Go to, to the, the Heavenly board. Father. Yeah. Go back to the drawing board. Amen. And I, he will help you. I Go left ahead. you guys a lot of notes. Amen. <laughs> I left you a lot of notes.